Welcome to the Art of Likeability, ranked one of the top podcasts in the world. In this podcast, you'll discover how to leverage likeability to build stronger relationships, lead more efficiently, close more sales, and keep customers happy while increasing success in your professional and personal life. Let's jump in with your host, Arel Moody. What's going on, Art of Likeability family? Arel Moody here, your host of the Art of Likeability podcast, where we teach you incredible strategies for being so likable that people will come up to you and be like, oh my goodness, look at your likability. That was a Sir Mix-a-Lot reference. There's not a lot of people born before 1983 that might get that reference. But if you were, you totally was like, wait a minute, that's a Sir Mix-a-Lot cadence. And for the younger crowd, they may have called that a little Wayne cadence. But you'd be wrong because little Wayne referenced Sir Mix a lot. Okay. He referenced him and made that possible. Okay. So I'm just going to go on with the episode because clearly I have taken that reference point too much. So, oh my gosh, look at her likability. <laughs> yeah. You know, it's funny because when I do these jokes, I'm by myself in a booth in a studio. I can't tell if people are laughing or if they're cringing. So if you could do me a favor for this particular episode, uh, tweet me at Arel Moody, A-R-E-L-M as in Mary, O-O, D as in David, I-E, A-R-E-L-M-O-O-D-I-E, at Arel Moody. Tweet me and say, Arel, I was laughing, or say, Arel, I was cringing. I will not be offended, okay? (laughs) But I want to talk to you more about building your likability skills, specifically how to build some social skills that are going to take things to the next level for conversation. So I'm really getting big into the whole conversation game, how to make sure you can talk to anyone anywhere at any time and keep a conversation going. And we got some really cool stuff, like a really in-depth opportunity for you to learn how to become like a rock star at it. I want to give you some some strategies around this. It's really good. Um, So if you're in a social setting, one of the most frustrating things. One of the things that is extremely difficult is how do you start a conversation when there's a, a bunch of people? There's So there's a group of people. Everyone gets into their natural circles. Everyone gets into their natural whatever. And you're like, man, how do I like get myself into the conversation? So one of the things that I like to do um, and I encourage you to do it as well because it's extremely effective. Like, it works every time. So let's say you're at a business event. You're at a networking event. You know, people got drinks or little plates with coup de gras in them or whatever. And you're like, all right, I am by myself. I need to start a conversation. What do I do? So the first thing I like to do is I like to first approach a group of strangers who feels most comfortable to me. Now, for some people, they say, well, Aurel, everyone doesn't feel comfortable to me. Yeah, but like, so for example, I'm a male um, walking up to a group of girls would be uncomfortable for me. One, I'm married, right? Um, so that's weird. But two, um, when if I'm a male and I walk up to a group of girls and I start having a conversation, there could be, and not always, but there could be some implied belief that I am trying to hit on them. And I'm generally not. So usually when I, I, I start the co- whole conversation thing, I might look for a group of guys, right? This is how I go through it. Because I know, like, what are my... Um, thing. So I'm a male. I'm, you know, somewhat young looking, somewhat old looking. I like to think of brothers a little bit attractive. You know, they call me butterscotch delight back in the day, you know? So, and when I mean they, I mean myself. I call myself butterscotch delight. I, I, it, it's what I told myself to give me more confidence about my brown skin. We're going to keep moving on. Don't judge me. You judging me? You listen to this podcast, you judging me. Unbelievable. Oh my God, look at your judgment. So we'll move on. So the thing is, I you, you want to get a sense, right? Like, who are the people that maybe are most similar, most different than you? Like, whoever you feel most comfortable with, like, choose. Now, you may not be comfortable. I said most comfortable. So I typically like to go to a group of guys. Maybe they're a little bit older than me. Um, that's kind of like my sweet spot for comfortability. The reason why I choose this crowd 
is because if they're a little bit older than me, they may not see me as a threat. Like if someone is my age, they might see me. And again, it's just, just understanding your your particular position because I'm young male. Some might consider me good looking. I don't know, right? Brother been in the gym a little bit, looking a little muscular, you know what I'm saying? Sure, looking a little, you know, probably I bought a medium when I should have got a large, but you know, whatever, right? I just like my first kind of um, interaction, I just don't want it to to go bad. I want to get wins under my belt. So I tend to find for me, if I speak to um, a small group of males who are a little bit older than me, they don't see me as competition because we're kind of in different age brackets. So I'm like in my early 30s, so maybe they'd be in their early 40s, maybe late 40s, right? Um, if, if they exist. If they're not there, I'll just choose a different crowd. But that's kind of like my sweet spot to start a conversation. It works. They could see me like a little brother or whatever. Um, so I'm not competition. It's not a bunch of women, so they don't think I'm hitting on them or whatever. So it's just an easy way to start a conversation. And literally what I do is if I see like a group of like six or seven people, like if it's a large group, right? And, you know, large is relative, but we'll call six or seven large. And they're all in a group chatting. I might get close to one of them who's not actively speaking. You don't want to pull up on a person who's actively speaking and interrupt them. Like maybe they're listening or whatever. And if it's a large group, I'll pull up next to them and I'll go, yo, what's everybody talking about? Like literally that'll be my end. And they go, oh no, we're just a bunch of friends or whatever, blah, blah, blah. I'm chatting, or they say, oh, you know, this person just came back from, you know, Peru, and they're telling, telling us about his trip. I'm like, oh, word, that's cool. And then now I'm become part of the circle. If it's a smaller group, maybe two, maybe three, right? It's a little bit more of an intimate group. And I see people talk, and I go, okay, I think I can fit into this conversation, um, especially if there's space, like physically. If there's people, like, in a circle but or, or a square or a triangle or, or just linear if it's two people, and there's a space, I can typically see it's happening now. To be honest with you, I usually don't insert myself into a conversation where there's two people. Because if two people are talking, they could be best friends having an intimate conversation, and now I become a third wheel, right? But if I see three people, I know that it's a group conversation, a little bit more of a group dynamic. And literally, if there's physical space between them, that means there's a place for me to physically insert myself. So I actually get kind of close to them, not jumping into the circle because I haven't been invited into the physical circle yet. I get right next to the circle. And then when they look at me, I'll just look at them and go, I I just wanted to be part of the conversation. I was wondering what you guys were talking about. No one is going to make you think if you say that, people are going to be like, get out of here, loser. Why don't you go home and cry some loser tears and eat some loser ice cream, at least a gallon. Bit. Because that's what maybe happened in high school and maybe that's what happened in some movie that they over-dramatize it. That's not what happens in the real world. Like, seriously. Next time you see, like, three three or more people talking, just walk over to them. But you got to smile. Right? It's very important. If you don't smile, you're going to... Like, if I walked up to a group of people and I was like, what, what, what are you guys talking about? I'm going to... You didn't even see me and I felt like a weirdo, didn't I? So that's why we emphasize smiling so much. Because when you smile, you disarm any creepy factor. Creepy people don't smile. Now, you also want to smile authentically. If you have a fake smile on, you know that smile that's just with your mouth and not with your eyes? Like an authentic smile actually includes a little bit of eye crinkle, you know, a little bit of... um, It's a genuine smile. If you're fake smiling, you ever like smile for a picture and a person's taking a long time to take a picture? You're like, just take the darn picture already. Jeez Louise, right? Like that kind of um, smile, that fake smile, you're going to look like a creeper. So as long as you don't come in with a straight face, you know, come in with a fake smile. And, you know, we have uh, something we're going to come out with that actually shows you how to create the perfect smile for your face, which is actually pretty cool, right? As long as you don't come out like a creeper, if you just go, I just want to see what y'all are talking about, you know, or um, I'm not part, like, acknowledge, like, I know I'm not part of the conversation, but I was curious what y'all were talking about. And then whatever they say, you just roll with it. It was like, oh, no, yeah, yeah, come on in, blah, blah, blah. We're just talking about so-and-so. And then you 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 start and you start using a lot of the conversation starter questions that, that we recommend using. And then you'll get involved in the conversation. The key points to remember about this particular strategy is you never want to insert yourself into a conversation where someone's actively speaking and you insert yourself next to the active speaker. That's actually not a good look because you're then like kind of interrupting you're kind of like uh, stealing the show. Like if you haven't seen it, there's a really great video of Seinfeld giving an interview, and Kesha, who's a pop singer, um, w- just walks up to him in the middle of his interview and goes, "Oh my God, Jerry, I love you. Can I have a hug?" And he's like, "No thanks." Like he just shuts her down. Now, obviously, that's a personal thing, also for Jerry Seinfeld. Like he doesn't want to hug strangers, but also he was in the middle of talking. 
So she just interrupted it, so it was actually kind of rude. So if you see a group of people, you don't actually want to insert yourself next to the active speaker. A lot of people think they should so they can hear what's being told. But actually what you do is you kind of whisper or, you know, lower tone, respectful voice to someone who's um, farthest away from the speaker. So if it's a square, you just choose one person who's not right next to them. Or if it's a circle, someone who's maybe the opposite side. And you just lean and go, hey, what, what are you guys talking about? That's it. Just lean in. What are you guys talking about? The person will tell you. Now, if the person kind of like looks and goes, ew, leave me alone, right? Like one that probably won't happen. Honestly, it really, it really won't. If it does, I, I assume that you came in with an approach where you weren't smiling or you like bumped into them or you did something like that. But most people actually will be happy to engage because social settings are for people to be social, right? Um, so again, if you're you find that audience that's least threatening for you, um, there's a lot of ways to come up with an audience that's least threatening, but you figure out what's least threatening. You insert yourself by saying, hey, what are you guys talking about? You know, or hey, wh- what's going on here? Wh- what's going on? I see a bunch of y'all talking. I was just curious what's going on. I just, or it's like, hey, I just want to be part of the conversation. You'll be surprised how that blatant authenticity said with a smile and genuine tone will bring you into a conversation with a bunch of strangers. And then all of a sudden you can learn. You know, oh, what are you guys doing here? Oh, what's that cool? Blah, blah, blah. Oh, do, does everyone know each other here? You start asking questions. And again, questions are the answers. So you start asking the questions. You ask the right questions in the right kind of order. And you can start a conversation with anybody. You could go right now. Like, as a social experiment, you go go to meetup.com, find a, a meetup, and go to it. Look for a group of people talking. Get right next to them as if you were the moon to their earth. So you're not in their orbit, but you're near it. And you go, hey, what are you guys talking about? Or, I know I'm part of a conversation. I just want to be a part of it. What are you guys talking about, right? And you do it in a respectful manner with a smile on your face. And you'll be surprised how many people would genuinely welcome you in. Because I just want to stress to you, the norms of childhood aren't the norms of adulthood. In childhood, it might be like, because a lot of times the reason why people ignore you and go, ew, leave me alone, or any of those kind of negative things that you've ever had with someone shutting you down, it's typically happened because that person didn't know how to respond to you. Like, they were socially awkward. And the easiest way for them to deal with not knowing how to be socially awkward is to make you, like, the wrong. And as long as you're the victim, they're fine. But if someone's actually socially affluent, like you're becoming because you listen to this podcast and invest your time and resources into the stuff that we do, you would know how to handle that situation much better. But since they didn't, they just kind of go, ew, and they make you feel bad. But as adults, that's typically not the case. Most people actually generally want to get to know you. So I encourage you, to try this out. It's a really, really good, amazing strategy. In addition to that, we are going to be coming out with some really cool stuff for you, some more intense training that will allow you to truly become a social rock star. You can start and keep a conversation going with anyone, anywhere, anytime. It's really, really cool. So I hope you take some time to learn more about it and get involved in it because it's going to be really, really cool. So um, I hope you try it. Remember, this information will not help you in any shape, form, or fashion. The implementation of this information will absolutely impact your life in an incredible way. So I hope that you use it. I hope that you have great conversations that might lead to business or personal, even romantic relationships that impact your life in a positive way. Sending you a big old high five. You are awesome. And if you have not done so yet, can you please go leave a five-star review on iTunes? Why are you listening to all these podcast episodes being so selfish? You're so selfish. Stop being so selfish. Share some love, baby. Do it on iTunes, Stitcher, iHeartRadio. I don't care what you're doing. Just give me a five-star somewhere. It helps more than you know. I'm out of here sending you a big old high five for the second time. You awesome. Thanks for listening. Make sure to subscribe to our podcast, The Art of Likeability, and reach out with any questions you have. Until next time, remember, my friend, you are...